And so we know that gentamicin is effective in treating pseudomonas when the diameter is equal to or greater than 15 millimeters. And our patient sample of pseudomonas produced an 18 millimeter uh, diameter. So that means that yes, gentamicin is effective in treating pseudomonas. And here we can see the chemical structure of pseudomonas. And so now let's discuss Pseudomonas aeruginosa's antibiotic resistance. Pseudomonas contains efflux pumps, which are protein transport mechanisms that remove toxic substrates, which can be drugs, chemicals, antibiotics, anything of the sort, from within the cell, so within the cytoplasm, and move it to the external environment. So basically what happens is antimicrobials or antibiotics enter bacteria through porins and they enter into the cytoplasm, but then they leave via active transport of the efflux pump, so they leave. And so what's interesting is that Pseudomonas has very few porins compared to other gram-negative bacteria, so this means that since there's already such a low number of porins, the ability of antimicrobials to enter is much lowered. So the rate of entry of antimicrobials is very low, which means that Pseudomonas is a very effective bacteria in that it is very difficult to get rid of, and it is very difficult to kill. So now I'm just, I really want to show you guys a YouTube video that really explains efflux pumps, uh, or it shows it in a really great animation, so let me just get that up for you and I'll play it. It's only about 30 sec seconds and it's very informative. Okay, so here it is, it's only about 45 seconds, so I'm going to let it play, and you guys listen and watch. Certain bacteria can often become resistant to antimicrobials through a mechanism known as efflux. An efflux pump is essentially a channel that actively exports antimicrobial and other compounds out of the cell. The antimicrobial enters the bacterium through a channel termed I hope that uh, quick video helped explain and show how resistant Pseudomonas aeruginosa is to most antibiotics and why only a very few antibiotics are effective in treating it. And that concludes our presentation on case study five.